Hello there and welcome to a very special episode of Sell or Shelf where I got someone else to choose the games for me. So I got Tesha, a good friend of mine, to pick free games out of the collection and then I have two to sell and one to keep. And essentially, after she chose those games, I reacted to what she gave me. I'll show that in 20 seconds, but I just wanted to give a quick update that in episode 2 of Seller Shelf, The Simpsons Road Rage sold for $20. So I'm very thankful for that, and if they're watching, thank you very much for that. And it's going straight to the Hammerhook Productions short film uh, funds. So there we go. And with that, let's get straight to the reaction. Okay, game number one is Pokemon Art Academy for the Nintendo 3DS. I was about to say the normal DS. This ought to be a fun one. <laughs> it's The Sims 3 on the Xbox 360. Okay. Well, basically I won't be able to finish these games. I think I could finish them in a way, but very creative games of choice. Alright, the final game that Tesha has chosen for me is... <laughs> Peppa Pig the game. Um, luckily that should take me only an hour to finish. <laughs> I don't know why I have this in my collection, but, you know, that is an interesting collection, so thank you very much. You're welcome. Peppa Pig. It's a show for babies and is not designed for me. Why do I have this game in my collection? Good question. I'm guessing I thought it would be a funny joke, only the joke crept up on me. I decided to play through this game in one singular sitting, and I hope you enjoy my misery. I'm gonna call myself... Whoa. Whoa. Easy. Medium. Hard. We're going hard difficulty. I'm actually gonna be very excited to sell this game. This is a 100% guarantee sell. So I'll sell it for a million dollars. George is in a stew. Are we popping bubbles? We're popping bubbles. So I picked the timer mode. So that means you can have a no timer mode and do this endlessly for an infinite amount of time. Oh God, end. Okay, so we've had our bath. Now we're gonna go have breakfast. Okay, I didn't mean to throw it. Why is it crazy? Why is the pancake crazy? On the plate! Oh, that's how you do it. Pepper and George are playing hide and seek. Where could George be? George, there he you. is. Oh, then he disappeared again. George, found you. George decided to hide in the same spot again. No, he didn't. He decided to go into the trash can. I would have preferred to go into the trash can. George, found he was you. in the bathtub all along. Pepper and George were so bored today that they decided to play hide and seek for the entire day. Daddy Pig was getting quite irritated at the sound of Pepper saying, George, George I found you. found you. All day, every 30 seconds. Mummy Pig just put on her headphones and ignored everything going around in her surroundings. George, found you. And James slowly went insane playing Pepper Pig the game. As most people would if they were over the age of 18. Peppa Pig is a blue car. Peppa Pig is a blue car. <laughs> Peppa 
Peppa Pig is a funny banana. <laughs> Funny banana. Ah, oh, I think I just found my favorite activity. Yeah. George is a big yo-yo. <laughs> George is a big yo-yo. <laughs> Susie sheep is a big pig. <laughs> Susie sheep is a big pig. <laughs> George I'm just gonna keep is this a one big down. pig. <laughs> Like, that works in the context, but calling the other animals pig, big pigs, that's hilarious. Okay. You just jump on the puddles, that's it. I love how Pe the perspective makes George and Pepper look like monsters in their universe. Oh, it's, it's basically the paint filler. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yes. Darkness is the night. That's more like it. Okay. Car. Okay. Good. Get me out of here. I'm doing the directions it wants me to. Ah, oh, you pick up the snowflakes. Wow. You know, I was thinking of the logical thing, which is to, you know, roll it onto the snow so it gets bigger and bigger, but, you know, just throw it up in the air and collect all the snowflakes. But yeah, you see this tree? MS paint. Okay, we gotta dodge the rain. But what if I was looking for the rain? Pepper's having a great time, holding on to no string. <laughs> I'm very shocked by the amount of kids games where you have to do like menial tasks like this, washing the car. Like when you just want to ask your parents to wash the car and be like, hey, is it okay if I wash the car and I get at least like $2? Five dollars. I'm wondering what the price was for this game specifically. Was it like fifty dollars Australian when it came out? Sixty dollars Australian? Because if that's the case, this is... I've been playing for 30 minutes, almost complete. I know a kid pr probably spent hours, ages on it, but... I don't know, you could get a lot more bang for the buck. The Sims was one of those childhood games where I legitimately questioned whether it was suitable for me. A game where you could woohoo and go to the toilet? Sign me up. It's a franchise I would be addicted to making the most of my Sim life. Raising families, causing fires, etc. When The Sims 3 came out onto the consoles, I asked to have it for Christmas, being 16 at the time. The biggest memory I have with The Sims 3 is spending a whole entire school holiday building a generation from one single family. I no longer have this save, but I do have my Resident Evil save, where I wanted to birth Alma from fear and make the whole family destructive. My old save began with me becoming a composer, having a partner, having lots of kids, with them going off into the world growing old. It was honestly a beautiful experience. I'm happy to start again, spending two weeks on an independent life to see if I can make it into the big leagues. First up, character creation. Meet Jacques Croque Monsieur, who looks like he'd be a good villain in Camp Rock 3. Whilst I made the design of Jacques, Tasha chose all the traits, being a gossiper, family orientated. With the career lifestyle being an angler who creates a private aquarium with 13 perfecto legendary fish. Trying to do all that, having a part-time job, plus getting in a relationship should elevate the challenge. A wish that came up immediately after I chose this wonderful home close to a little park was for Jock Croc to get a job in the business world. I grabbed the newspaper, got him to read out the jobs and bam, successfully got a job. I envy that. Every weekday from 8am to 2.30pm, 
you would go and do business type stuff. After work though, it was all about fishing. Both kinds. Fishing in the waters, and fishing for new friendships and potential romantic partners. What you're about to see is a complete soap opera. As time flew by, catching perfect minnow and goldfish, Jock Croc came up to Heather Vasquez, a lady who was already in a relationship with Tyler Vasquez. Things are going well, really well, and she becomes a part of the household and a new romantic partner. They get married in the kitchen. Heather is a chef and loves to do gardening plus fishing. She also repairs toiletries and TVs too. Combining their Samoans results in the house getting a new set of furniture and style to the base house. All is well, and they work. They work, work, work. Which means there's nothing to do but wait. As I wait, I wanted to mention something hilarious about the Sims in this game. Everywhere they go, they love to read a book. Never, ever encountered a Sim throughout this entire playthrough that doesn't read. In fact, it is 80% of what they do, to a point where even my own characters stopped what they were doing just to get a few pages in. Anyway, Jacques Croc and Heather are having the best time of their lives. Lots of reading, a fair amount of woohoo, and fishing. Different kinds of fishing. Heather is with Alice Rant. Jacques is with Michelle Giles, or Giles. Heather cheated on Jacques, and Jacques cheated on Heather. A very healthy dynamic. Your average weekday telenovela. They tested each other by being afar and close by to cheat without getting caught. That was until one day where they cheated on each other in the same house. It was insulting to Jacques, and vice versa to Heather. They couldn't believe they would cheat on the other. For weeks, it got worse. Trying to make amends was tough as the ice became thin. They'd go to work, come home, and do their own thing. Jacques tried to stop with the cheating until he went to the beach one day. He knew Heather was to be an elder in a few days, but couldn't commit. Heather asked if she could be friends with Alice, as did Jacques with Michelle. All was fine until Kyla Green came along. Uh-oh. On that day, that night, simple couch talk turned into a game. First Heather was all about it, then went to bed. Afterwards, Jacques was all about it. They realize the game they are playing, and the ice shatters. Their marriage is torn apart. As Heather became an elder, after an underwhelming party, it was quiet. A lot of working, and trying to get Heather to her lifetime achievement. Although, the major focus was for Jacques to keep fishing. You remember that? But something didn't feel right. I figured it would be best for Jacques and Heather to make amends for both of their actions before they could officially get back together. Before they could officially get back together, she passed on. The Grim Reaper appeared, and she was a ghost in the house. A truly sad moment. They made their last moments worth it by having some time alone together, lots of couch time, lots of woohoo, don't know how that works. Time passed along and it was time for Heather to go. It was time for Jacques to give up the ghost. And as this happened, Jacques became an elder too. After getting so far in his business career and obtaining a few promotions and raises, it was high time Jacques Croc Monsieur retired and started fishing on a daily basis. Remember, his lifetime achievement was having 13 different fish with a perfect rating in separate fish bowls. Day after day, karma power after karma power, which by the way was helpful in the latter part and I completely forgot they existed, I reached level 10, collected a bunch of fish made a fishbowl museum in the household, it was time. Jacques' lifetime achievement was met and life kept going. This major goal in life had been completed. The rest of this time used was to look after the fish, feeding them every day. After catching up with Tyler Vasquez of the park, Heather's previous partner, Jacques decided he should move in. He's close to his deathbed, plus it wouldn't hurt to have another person to help feed the fish. The next few days, they became friends with the maid, Laura Sargent. She would visit often, enough to the point where she no longer was their maid. Lots of television, 
conversations were had, nothing else. It was nice. Till one day, Jacques passed away on a park bench, reading a book. It was sudden, especially since I was expecting for Tyler to go first. Vasquez arranged a funeral which was also a birthday party for Laura. Then after the party simmered down, Tyler eventually had his time and it kicked me out of the house. That feeling of it all ending was honestly amazing. That inevitability struck real hard by the time I got to appreciate the character I created and as well as the friends and relationships made. I may have summarized the whole playthrough in such a small portion of time, but trust me, the majority of the time playing was a lot of this. Pokemon Art Academy is exactly what's described. With over a hundred Pokemon to illustrate, this game is good for those beginning art illustration. It's probably not the best method with such a small digital canvas and slippery stylus. You could probably buy a large sketchbook and go about it that way. But I will compliment that it gradually starts simple and shares new tools and methods of art creation as you progress further. I'm probably going to guess that the original Art Academy has a lot of interesting images to peer at for the personal canvas, so maybe there's more value there. Personally, I don't find my drawings to be great. I'm more into abstract futurism on a 2D plane, graphic design, etc. Doesn't mean I engage with learning the basics. The first quarter of playing this, it's nice. Easy Pokemon designs that are engaging enough to follow, eventually ending up looking like the models and Pokemon themselves. Usually during this routine, I would be talking to friends or quotations watching YouTube. The further I went along though, the more rushed I felt. The music is not amusing in the slightest. It's very boppy and not relaxing. It's no chill hop, it's no relaxation station. It is basically just blah, blah, blah. So, and also the scribble sound effects personally grated my ears off. So majority of the time I just had it on mute and listened to something else. I gave up mentally with the usual structure as it just kept on doing the same repetitive thing just with uh, different items, different pencils and stencils, all that sort of stuff. It just wasn't gripping me by the end of it. So only one gets to be put on the shelf for today. And I wonder which one it is. It's The Sims 3. <laughs> The Sims 3 wins over these two. I don't think I really want Peppa Pig the game in my collection. And Pokemon Art Academy, whilst it is good for what it is, I don't see myself coming back to it. The Sims 3, I had so much fun documenting the character that I created and creating such drama, such fun, such interesting chemistry and it really brought it back to me, and the reason why I really enjoyed playing this back in my high school, college days. So thank you very much for watching this rendition of Seller Shelf, and be sure to tune in to the next episode as another friend of mine has decided to choose three games from my shelf, and it is a doozy. See you then, and also share it around. Subscribe, like, dislike, comment. I don't really know how to do these things, so again, thank you very much.